the next on the tour is um, Cairns Marine. And um, yeah, we'll see what the facilities they've got. Okay, so here we are at Cairns Marine. Um, it's interesting you get out the front, you can see um, some big export tubs. And uh, as soon as you get into the uh, main showroom, you see this incredible, uh, basically single species Dallas tank, which is just something you don't see very often. The picture doesn't really um, show how um, amazing it is in person. It really has inspired me to want to set up a Dallas specific tank. Um, let's do a bit of a tour now of their, um, they've got a display tank there with an incredible gold deshi. Again, unfortunately, the camera doesn't really pull it up, but uh, the colors are amazing. And it's got um, some just a bizarre mix of bright orange uh, recordia through to some um, basic softies and some zoas. And uh, they also have a, um, a retail section where they have um, some assorted corals for sale. Not to mention um, some dry goods, um, including the full uh, Triton range, which um, is something you don't see on the um, shelves in Australia very often. So um, I was quite excited to see this. Um, just check out what sort of um, supplements and things they have there. Um, as well as a range of uh, test kits and equipment. Um, you've got some magnet cleaners there, some test kits, some skimmers, some uh, pumps and reactors, doses, Red Sea gear, um, you name it, they've got it there, which um, is pretty cool to see. There's also this cool little uh, mascot in the um, area that wanted to hop on my mate's uh, shoulder and uh, apparently give him a bite. But uh, let's get on to uh, some of the other uh, items that I'm sure you're wanting to see, which is um, their vast coral selection here. Um, Cancer Marine has really sort of split up into a, a few things that really caught my eye. Obviously, um, the huge range of uh, sustainably collected corals, um, their, their aquarium, um, as in home aquarium sized fish, um, the vast amount of really cool equipment that runs all these tanks, and then finally, um, something that you don't see very often um, public aquarium fish, um, including like big sharks and um, rays and things like that. So, here we are looking at um, some of the coral banks, which um, you can see go on and on for days. Um, SPS up along the top with some LPS down the bottom there. Um, just a, such a vast selection of um, species, sizes, colors, um, all looking really good. I mean, look at all the Dallas pieces here. Uh, Dallas, my apologies, Duncan um, pieces there with beautiful green skeletons still on them. Um, look at the bright, bright colors and those red Montes there. And um, yeah, just just really cool to see. Um, I was lucky to be there with um, my local fish shop owner who was um, hand picking some corals to um, bring back to Melbourne, which was um, really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, just <laughs> these pieces are so fresh and so bright and colourful. Um, it was difficult not to come back with 400 boxes of stuff, but uh, we managed to uh, keep a lid on it and not bring too many things back. Um, there were a few other uh, local fish shop owners there on that day um, hand picking some stuff too. Um, this is a cool little bit to see that um, uh, the staff at Cairns Marine, they care about the corals. This section was um, items just to be uh, monitored. They're, they're definitely not to be packed yet. And uh, here's just a quick overview of some of the equipment here. Some massive pumps running. Um, you see some big sand filters there, crazy skimmers, and uh, um, a whole bunch of um, fans. I've deliberately turned the audio off from this um, recording because... Um, it's you can tell it's a, if you've got like a fish room at home and you know how noisy they are just imagine that um multiplied quite a number of times because um yeah she was, she was a pretty noisy and uh humid environment but um yeah, some of these big big skimmers just um doing their job if you've got um a few tanks at home and you're a bit of a, a equipment nerd like i am you'll um, get pretty excited by this just the um plumbing and um pumps and skimmers and things everywhere not to mention some of the ozone they run outside which um i'll show you later on some of the larger tanks i'm trying to give you a bit of a um an overview just of the of the size of the facility here it's um can be deceptive because i must admit it's it's not the biggest um floor space um that you'd imagine cans marine would have um like don't get me wrong it's, it's a pretty big place but it's no um it, it's no shopping mall size place um when you consider how many things they have in here, the tanks are stacked to sometimes three um, levels high uh, with some tier systems. And as you can see, these these coral bays are like packed. There's there's a lot of stuff in here, um, and it doesn't really sit on the shelf there long. They're um, shipped off to um, uh, retailers all across Australia pretty quickly. And uh, just yeah, there's a variety. We've got zoas here. We've got deshies. We've got hammers. 
Um, looks like maybe a torch or something there near some SBS. I think these might be some pieces that um, stores have already picked. Um, some beautiful blue stags there. I apologize, I'm going to be rambling on a little bit here through this video, but um, there's just so much to show. And um, when we get to the fish, I'm not going to know um, all the species, so I'm going to be caught out a bit there. So um, we might just watch as it goes along. But uh, here's another skimmer, which is just um, <laughs> an absolute beast of things like that. that. As you can see from the video, that's taller than I am by a fair bit. And um, I'm six foot tall, so I'm guessing that skimmer would be seven, maybe eight feet high. Here's um, some uh, some cool sponges um, and some uh, dendros and stuff like that, um, non-photosynthetic corals. A um, little quick sneak peek of um, some of the tanks we'll look at outside, some of the staff working there. You get a quick look at uh, some of the packing equipment here. And um, yeah, let's see what other corals we can find. Here we go. Here's some uh, nice bright hammers, some nice modeled ones. You see plenty to uh, pick from there. So yeah, if you... If you ever get the chance um, with your store to come and hand select the, the things, you'd be crazy not to. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, cool, some nice singularia. Onto some more LPS. I'm not sure what the dimensions are of these tanks, but um, as you can see, they're pretty big. You can't really see um, directly across. Um, you, you basically need to walk both sides of the tank. There's some really cool fungies. Um, I think one of those came home with us, which well will be coming in the mail soon, which would be cool. We got up here. Oh, some recordia, everyone's favourite. Yeah, what else? Yeah, some nice elegance corals. Some different varieties of hammers. We got here a bunch of zoas for the zoa fans out there. Interestingly, the zoas are running um, um, actinic uh, D5s over them, which you know we all know zoas love to pop under LED. Um, so they didn't catch your eye from across the room, but uh, once you started looking closer, you'll see some incredible zoas. There's a bunch of soft corals. Move on to, uh, interestingly, some frags here. Um, Cairns Marine doing some frags now, which is uh, really cool to see. Personally, I, I'm a big fan of the fragging side of the hobby, so um, it's good to see such a main player getting involved. I'm doing a um, really quick scan over here of um, some of the inverts, a bunch of snails, crabs, stars. Um, we're gonna hear some more snails. Uh, here was some cool um, cowries. Um, some beasts. I'd love to bring one of them home, but I'm not sure how they'd go on my tank. Um, I've actually gone into the uh, temperate uh, room here now. So th these are some cooler water species. Um, a bunch of um, seahorses. Don't mind my reflection on the glass. Um, oh, we got some other snails here. I'm jumping between footage. I apologize. Some, um, oh my God, I've forgotten the name now. Conch snails, I believe. Some cool little invert there. He's... Um, People have to correct me, some sort of uh, shrimp in their box back there. He's um, yeah, cool looking dude. There's some uh, seahorses here. So we might not be in the temperate room yet. We're gonna go in there next, um, which is pretty cool to see. It's something I haven't really, despite having six tanks at home, I haven't really played with yet is some um, colder water species. These are some incredible ricks. Um, I put my hand over the lights to try and give you a better idea uh, of the colors of them. Um, hopefully uh, my local fish shop picked a few of those out because yeah they're, they're going to be tempting and uh, yeah apologies for how blue this is you can see in the bottom right hand corner my phone camera is struggling with it um, everyone's favorite some uh, red line cleaner shrimp um, which are quite difficult to come by in Australia a whole bunch of hermits here outside they had some um, huge land-based hermits which were really cool um, some of these morphs were amazing. They were all sort of just chucked in there as basic morphs, but uh, that one there looked more like a clam mantle or something. It was um, something else. And yeah, I gotta try to get a better footage of it again with the torch off. Uh, there's some more there over in the back. It's got a real strange pattern to them um, with some bright uh, rims. A whole bunch of, there's some really nice orange ones in there, um, verging on jawbreaker sort of side with uh, some little green splashes in them. And what do we got in here? Some other morphs. All sorts of uh, interesting pieces. So yeah, I apologize. There's just so much to show. Um, I'm not even showing everything. Um, yeah, this was pretty cool, the cone snail. Obviously covered off. You don't want to put your hand in there. It can kill you. Um, beautiful Magnifica with the trio of clowns in there. That just looked, yeah, that 
always makes a hobbyist's um, heart melt when you see things like that. Um, some varieties of bubble tips, some bright green ones, some less bright green ones, and then it uh, looks like a bunch of other bubble tips. Um, these are really cool, um, not suitable for my tank at all, but some super bright nudie branks. Um, that one almost looks like it has a face painted on the front, which is cool to see. And uh, this skimmer got my attention because it's got a uh, what appears to be a, a wash down system, so just to keep the um, cup nice and clean, which it appears to be working. Another beast sized of a unit. And uh, yeah, the old bucket to catch the um, skim out at the bottom there, which looked a little bit runny. Oh, this was a really rare fish. Um, yeah, you can see that I can't pronounce that. Prognathides. And this is another rare fish, some of the super high end stuff that Cairns Marina got. Um, these little dudes will no doubt find a home. I think they were seen possibly in Japan. You can see here that um, despite uh, me not even covering a, a percentage of the stuff they got at Cairns Marine, that they're building yet more tanks and put things in here. These guys were awesome. Looking through the window, super curious what I was doing there and if I was going to feed them. We'll get a better look at some of the um, public aquarium sized fish soon, but um, I couldn't help as I was walking past, have a look at these guys. They're funny, they, they wanted to look at me just as much. And yeah, I'm going to show my ignorance there and not know the species of uh, most of these, but uh, cool fish to see nonetheless. These ones were a bit more common uh, known. Our uh, Naso Tang, Tangs, Fox Faces, uh, a couple of different uh, angels and butterflies in there. Looks like, yeah, some other rabbit fish too. Here's some more of the um, filtration equipment, some sumps. It's like a bunch of uh, oxygen and then yeah another little sneak peek of some of the uh, larger tanks outside that we'll check out soon i'm going to do a quick run through the fish because um for those who don't know cans marine have a ridiculous amount of um just just mind-boggling numbers of different species on hand um, and you can see each of these tanks has got a little uh little sign indicating how often they're getting fed, if the tank's been treated with anything, um, anything that needs to be watched out for, um, which is yeah, also the sort of water they were collected from just so that they can make sure that they're um, maintaining these fishes as best as humanly possible, which is good to see. Um, some beautiful wrasse, um, just the coloring on those guys is so cool to see. A little sneak peek in here to, um, I think he's a big groper in there. And uh, yeah, lovely big Maori I see this guy's like a puppy dog. Just wants your attention all the time. He's always looking at what you're doing. Here's some more of the crazy, crazy equipment. This um, yeah, gets me excited, makes me want to go big and build like a um, house-sized tank when I see some of the equipment running tanks like this. But um, yeah, then when you start pricing things up, it's uh, much easier and cheaper to just come and see Cans Marine do it. They've got some big nets over the edges of that tank there. That's, um, I assume those fish like to jump, so by covering the um, sides, it stops them jumping up. Here was a whole vat full of um, blue tangs, which um, Dory, everyone's favorite, swimming in there. Some more cool wrasse. I'm going to be honest, oh, the Harlequin Tusk, which is um, one of the um, Australian uh, <laughs> icons, I guess. Um, a few fish there that they've got the front blacked out just so that they're um they can acclimate in there without getting too scared sort of basically gives them a bit of room to hide which is a um, nice touch nice thing to see although you can see here some of these guys uh, don't want to hide they're curious what's going on and yeah it's just so many fish um uh, as i'm doing the voiceover for this now i feel like i should have cut a little bit more of this out but i already cut so much out um it would be not doing cancer injustice to show at least a percentage of the um, livestock they have on hand. Um, so, yeah, I guess, <laughs> again, apologies for the um, voiceover being a little bit uh, lacking in details, but um, just tune me out. I'll turn the volume down and be sure to watch along. There's a real cool little um, goby, I think. Um, yeah, so many fish. So many fish. Most of them I did not know the name of. Um, I had to ask uh, my mate Dave a few times just what the species were and whether they'd be suitable for my tank or not. Um, sadly, a lot of them were not. These guys were cool. I'll come back to them soon. The um, I think they're called bladefish. 
is a set of view of the unpacking um, machines, which is really cool. These uh, things are fully automated. They just pick the size of the bag they need and they press the foot lever and it automatically um, puts our little metal clips around there, which yeah, when you're packing as many fish and corals as these guys do a day, I imagine them, that would save them an immense amount of time. All these anthias are beautiful, all looking really healthy, bright, full of color. Not sure what those guys were, but they looked really cool. They're schooling together. Some beautiful um, anthias there, some super males um, on display there as well, which um, makes me wish that uh, my male would hurry up and. Uh, He's only barely male, let alone um, super male. Some square blocks with some uh, mocky clowns. Um, some more anthias. More anthias. So many fish on hand. More anthias. These are beautiful. I think they're purple queens. Beautiful, beautiful fish. The colors are incredible. Here's some more of these dudes. Such strange animals. I'm not sure what kind of tank these guys would go in, but um, they were cool to see. Real diversity there. Looks like a um, swallowtail angel. He's a little bit shy. He's hiding behind the square, so I'll move on from him. Some more uh, butterflies. I'm going to zoom through here. Some long nose. Quick little view of the sump for all these tanks. A bunch of uh, pyramid butterflies, which is some of my favorites. I love the pyramid butterflies because they're such a model citizen plus um, they're an incredible fish to photograph they always come up really really nice and um, for people that aren't in the hobby they always grab their attention come along a little bit uh, a bit of a predator section here we've got a bunch of triggers and um, some puffers puffers are always cool they're always like little puppy dogs wanting your attention here we are some um, seahorses I think we're into the uh, temperate uh, tank section now Keep a number of seahorse in here. I think um, also soon we see a um, ornate cowfish, um, which is a really cool little fish to see in person. Um, like I said earlier, this uh, seeing um, this fish in here almost half tempts me to make a um, tank number seven for the house and run a cold water tank. This guy here, he's he's cool. See some of the uh, filtration in here. The big MRC skimmer doing its job, and uh, then yeah, this big. Uh, all right, cool, here we are. Outside checking out some of the um, public aquarium size stuff, which, um, yeah, I guess is uh, just a bit of a tourist attraction for me, really. I'm obviously not in a space to uh, put a 10-foot uh, uh, leopard shark in my tank, but um, seeing these guys swim around and um, seeing them looking so happy and healthy was um, amazing to see. Fortunately, I got um, a bit of a tour of this section from uh, the Cairns Marine manager in um, Lyle Squire, and... Um, he was just really able to give such an informative overview of uh, the care that goes into these animals and um, particularly around around the shipping of these worldwide and how um, they've designed and engineered their own shipping containers um, that just improve the, the, the health and safety of these animals as they get shipped around the world and um, really innovating in the space, which was um, cool to see. Big guys like this and just... Um, you wouldn't think that a, a fish that looks so friendly like this could be so mean, but um, you almost wanted to pat him until you see these big spikes on um, on his back. So yeah, we won't touch him. We'll leave him alone. And uh, old mate Maori Rass here, always uh, got his eyes moving around to see what you're up to, what you're doing, just looking to see if I've got any food in my hands. And uh, once he realizes I don't, he basically gives me the cold shoulder. And uh, some more uh, fish in here getting ready to be uh, sent. I wish I could tell you what kind of species these were, but um, unfortunately, I do not know. But uh, yeah, let's get back outside and check out some more. There's some triggers. Let's get outside and check out some more um, cool larger fish because, um, yeah, like I said, I'm on holidays here, so let's do some of the touristy things and um, look at uh, public aquarium size fish. So here's another one of these big Maori rats. Um, Again, he's coming up to see what I've got in my hands, and then once he realizes it's just a camera, he's uh, not too pleased with me. Got some other little sharks here. Um, I think they're wobby gongs, but uh, people that know will probably tell me how stupid I am. That's fine. I know that already. 
And uh, yeah, here's some cool, uh, I think we've got some black tip uh, reef sharks here. Yeah, such a majestic animal, the way they swim around. Um, scary, yet beautiful looking. Got some rays in here. And I think, oh yeah, there's a um, shark ray, which is a pretty cool thing to see. I've never seen one of those in person before. Um, such a bizarre animal caught in the middle. Some of the um, tails on some of these rays are just massive. Uh, most of these tanks here have got uh, little uh, sight glasses on the side, which is, is good because you um, can't really see on the top with all the uh, all the water turbulence. Um, so being able to have a quick check on the um, inspection window was, was really cool. Um, there's some white tip sharks in there. Obviously a um, ray whose tail won't move. It's massive. There's a black tip as well. Um, this was cool. This was... Um, these are like it doesn't really show up on camera but these are large large um tangs and some other fish there that are, i'm assuming for public aquariums because they're um they're going to be too big for 98 percent of home aquariums but um just all just this site class i could look through this all day they're all just no aggression all just happy swimming around doing their thing it's um, really cool to see Here's a view of the same tank from the top. You can sort of see in a little bit here, massive emperor angel in there. And uh, onto these guys, um, uh, silver sharks, which have got these um, incredibly fine scales, which um, well, there's a white tip, but uh, the ones that don't have the white tips on their tail. Um, that guy there, yeah, the silver sharks, um, just got this incredible shimmer and shine to them. Um, they look almost metallic, they're just really beautiful. Let me get a little view of the top of that tank here. I think, yeah, he gets to see the um, trademark fin um, breaching the water surface, which is, um, yeah, when they're in a tank like this, it's um, not so scary, but out in the wild, you put a little bit of a shiver down your spine. This massive angel here swimming around. They've always got such an angry look on their face, but um, these guys, I'm not sure what these guys are. Um, pretty active little fish, though. I say little. I think they're about two foot long. <laughs> little shark comes to say hi. Now all this is leading up to a um, bit of a grand finale on some of the um, coolest fish I've ever seen um, in some tanks. So uh, apologies for my ramblings, but um, be sure to keep watching or um, fast forward if you prefer. This was cool. This is um, uh, the ozone and uh, skimmer setup on some of these large tanks outside. That skimmer is massive. It's probably, I don't know, two foot, two and a half foot um, wide, and then uh, maybe 10 foot high um, running. I think it was a um, 2000 watt um, ozone system on it with um, this massive tub of kitty litter hanging off it as a um, tank dryer. Um, I wish I could remember the species of these um, redfish, but um, uh, Lyle was saying that they're uh, super popular with public aquariums in um, like shark, shark tanks because uh, they got these really strange um, uh, skin that uh, the sharks don't want to touch um, and that they're a pretty hardy fish and bright and they move around a lot so um, they go really well with um, shark tanks. Out here is um, an interesting thing to see, it's like the only freshwater tank um, in the facility and these are um, uh, a passion of Lyle's from uh, back, um, he, he's taken it on from his grandfather, um, uh, the uh, freshwater turtles uh, that he's uh, breeding out here, he's got this incredible outdoor pond um, as you can see here, they've got a few isolation areas because they like to bite each other. They've got really cool little faces on them. They look like uh, almost like little aquatic sloths um, with their little pig noses. And uh, this is probably the highlight of the tour for me, seeing uh, these baby hammerheads, which are um, being raised uh, really, really successfully um, at the Cairns Marine facility. These animals are just incredible the way they um, swim around. They're so fast and agile. Um, got this huge outdoor setup. In a second, we get to see them um, being fed. Um, you just see how fast and um, how scary it would be <laughs> swimming around in a um, in a bunch of adults of them. I, I cannot imagine, but um, seeing them swimming around like that in um, person was just really cool to see. And um, yeah, we'll chuck some food in in a second and um, get to see how fast they move around. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, the, the point of this is um, 
there's so many aspects to Cairns Marine that um, from a uh, hobbyist point of view, you don't really see or have awareness of. We just look at um, the little uh, palm-sized fish that come in um, and some corals that come to our local fish store. But uh, just seeing uh, some of these larger things and, and hearing some stories about um, how they're improving the, um, the, the survival and welfare of these fish um, at public aquariums worldwide and um, yeah, really leading the way. It's inspirational to see. So um, I'd like to uh, thank Cairns Marine for um, allowing me to um, not only go on the tour but also to film this. Um, and uh, yeah, just the hospitality was fantastic. Um, if you're ever in, in Cairns, be sure to drop in and um, even if you only get to see the retail section, it'd be well worth it. But um, if I was you, I would uh, ask if you could head out the back and um, get a bit of a uh, quick tour around and check out some of these things. Thanks for watching.